thank you all very much for inviting me and for being here. It's a great pleasure, and I have to thank Professor Celso Castro for such a um, generous introduction. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to continue to work with you and to see you in different uh, seminars and congress like this one. And it's, I, I also would like to thank the University of Florida and Professor Jeffrey Needle for organizing this and inviting me. And it's a great pleasure to be here and see so many good and old friends as our former Minister of Agriculture, Roberto Rodriguez, with whom I had the pleasure to work uh, during his tenure as minister. I was the chief of cabinet to the foreign minister, and we took um, part in different meetings all over the world uh, in relation to uh, WTO negotiations and many others. And I uh, also would like to acknowledge the, the presence of pro pro Professor Emilio Bruna from the University of Florida, who has been helping me since yesterday and who has shown a great deal of commitment with the program for Brazilians here in the university uh, called uh, Science Without Front, uh, Borders, which I'll, I'll uh, say a few words uh, briefly. But I, I was asked to come and to make some remarks uh, in the context of this uh, seminar called Emergent Brazil. And you are, very, you are all very familiar and very knowledgeable of, about Brazil, so I won't uh, be very long, I promise you, and I, want, I, I don't want to keep you from uh, your desserts. But uh, I just would like to, to make a few remarks about the economy of Brazil. Uh, the Brazilian economy from 2002 to 2010 grew four times. This is quite an achievement. We have had this morning a very interesting uh, presentation, the first in the morning, by Professor Marshall Eakin. And he gave us a very good uh, idea and a very uh, good vision of the uh, development, not only economic, but social uh, and political in Brazil during the last 200 years. So I'd like to focus on a very short period, saying that in 2010, Brazil's economy was four times bigger than eight years before. And in 2010, in, in 2002, the, the Brazil's economy accounted for 1.4% of the world's economy. And in 2010, it was 3.3% of the world economy. So this gives you uh, a, a important uh, vision and an important notion of the growth and what it meant Brazil became by this growth, the sixth largest economy in the world. And the GDP last year, 2012, was something around uh, $2.7 trillion. Uh, we were very successful during these um, last 10 years to have very, uh, uh, a very low unemployment rate, inflation under control, and a big participation in the world economy through commerce and through investments. I uh, would like to mention that inflation last year, last year we had a very special situation. Our GDP growth was much smaller than it was projected, and especially than it was expected, not only in Brazil, but all over the world. But we had at the same time uh, an inflation which was a little higher, but always within the, the, the target, the inflation target established by the government. But what is important to say is that the, uh, the, the, the Brazilian economy uh, relies on a very uh, big and growing uh, middle class and an important uh, domestic market. Uh, as it was shown also this morning, Brazil has something like 105 million inhabitants in the middle class. This generates a very important mass of consumers, and uh, this is what helped Brazil face the international crisis that affected uh, us all in 2008, and that was also a key a factor for the recovery uh, during this period. Inflation last year was 5.8%, 
it's expected to be lower this year. But uh, what I would like also to say is that uh, this inflation rate and the growth of the economy uh, was affected by new measures that were put in force by the government of President Rousseff. There was a lot of change in the economic model. It's not a complete change, but uh, new uh, decisions and new policies that were implemented, such as lowering uh, dramatically the interest rate, that's a very important one, and also uh, the, the fluctuation of the exchange rate was a second very important uh, aspect, and uh, also the new measures taken by the government with, um, with relation to the cost of, a, of electricity, of energy, to uh, the domestic consumption and also to industry. This, of course, uh, is a very, very important measure, and all these measures, they will have their effect in the future, in the near future, in the midterm future, but of course they accounted for uh, maybe for higher inflation or um, more reduced uh, uh, pace of economic growth. But just to to give you also an idea of the importance of these uh, measures which have been taken since the macroeconomic stabilization was reached uh, 20 years ago, uh, the imp it's important to, to know that uh, we had in Brazil 51 to 52 million people moved in, in the social uh, ladder in Brazil. We had 24 people were raised out of extreme poverty and 31 million people joined the middle classes. And the government of President Rousseff has uh, a program to eliminate completely extreme poverty till the end of her uh, mandate. So just to summarize the, the important uh, factors, the three important factors that generated this uh, big growth and this important growth in our economy, I would mention macroeconomic stabilization that was initiated in the 90s and which controlled inflation, the social security, social inclusion, inclusion policies that uh, were put in force uh, during the last decade, and the new investment opportunities that emerged at the heels of macroeconomic stabilization and of policies of social inclusion. I uh, would like to say a few words about the importance of the relation of Brazil and the United States. The relation, the bilateral relation is very, very important and I've been speaking in different places and stressing the, the historic importance of this relation. It's a very old, maybe one of the oldest in the Western Hemisphere between Brazil and the United States. The United States was the first country to recognize the independence of Brazil and um, we have had a number of bilateral visits from uh, of our heads of states. The first visit from Brazil to the United States was in the 19th century. In 1876, the emperor of Brazil came to the United States, and the first head of state from the United States to visit Brazil was President Hoover in 1929. So it's a long story. It's very important. But it's becoming uh, more, even more important. We saw this morning the historic uh, presence of the United States and Brazil as uh, uh, players in the world and as uh, friendly countries. But as the Brazilian economy grows, uh, it's important to count on the United States and to export to the United States and to have a more important uh, relation not only in terms of trade but also investment. And the same thing on the other side. From the United States side and from the United States point of view, Brazil is a very important market because we uh, have this big, huge market, this, the, the, the largest in Latin America, and we have this tradition of investments and trade. Our trade with the United States is very important since the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, since 1910 to 2010, the United States was the first uh, trade partner of Brazil. In 2011, this position was taken by China, but it's recovering, and very soon, I'm sure this year, the United States will be again 
the first uh, trade partner of Brazil. But um, I also uh, would like to stress that the investment relation is very important. Brazil is the largest investor, uh, the United States is the largest investor in Brazil. We have a total stock of capital, of U.S. capital in Brazil of something around uh, $110 billion. But also Brazilian investments are becoming very important in the United States. I, uh, we, we, the, the total stock, although it's a fraction, it's maybe 10% of the U.S., a uh, little over 10% of the U.S. Uh, capital invested in Brazil, it's $14 billion as of last year. But it's very important. It generates a lot of um, jobs in the United States, and it helps uh, keeping, maintaining uh, over 100,000 jobs here. And the investments go from many different areas. I yesterday had the pleasure to, vi the, to visit the assembly line of Embraer in Melbourne, which is a very, very impressive company. They are producing uh, um, executive jets in, uh, in Melbourne, and they are planning to open uh, new uh, plants in Jackson, and they are also in Fort Lauderdale and in other parts of the United States. But this, the investments go from orange juice production to um, aircraft production, to uh, beef production, beer, and many, many other areas. So it's a very important investment. Uh, ten years ago, Brazil, to each dollar that was invested from Brazil in the United States, there were $47 going from the United States to Brazil. This proportion today is run from Brazil to 6.7 from the United States. This does not mean that the U.S. investment uh, fell, that were uh, dramatically reduced. This shows the growth of the Brazilian investment and the presence in the United States. And uh, both countries are, of course, important uh, players, world players in terms of trade, but also bilaterally. Brazil and the United States, we have a very strong bilateral uh, commerce we have a total flow of $75 billion last year. This is a lot. This is the eighth largest, uh, Brazil is the eighth largest uh, trade partner of the United States. If you consider, of course, the, the, the total uh, of the trade with Canada, with Mexico, and with China, it's much bigger. It's something around, with each country, uh, $500 billion. But it's a, it's a very interesting number to see that Brazil is well ahead of many, many countries uh, in the world and all the BRICS countries except China and many old and traditional partners of the United States in the Gulf countries where there's a very important trade in terms of oil and arms and it's much bigger than the biggest uh, bilateral trade with uh, with, the, the Gulf, uh, with the Gulf countries. So this shows the importance uh, of this relation and the strategic importance of even further and deeper relations in the future because uh, we do need, as I said, the, the U.S. market and the United States also uh, need the, the Brazilian market because it's very vibrant and growing. And uh, this good atmosphere for uh, investments is present in our everyday life we have received a lot of investments from all over the world, but from many, many, many important Brazil, um, U.S. companies too. Just last week, uh, CVS bought a very important chain of pharmacies in, the, in Brazil, which is a, a flourishing business there. And this shows uh, that um, the, the U.S. investors, they are looking at Brazil. They are interested in many, many different areas, not only the traditional ones. Well, speaking of investments, I just would like to make a, a brief mention to the fact that the Brazilian government will organize on the 26th of February in New York a very important road show to uh, showcase our projects in the areas of uh, highways, railways, ports, airports, oil, uh, and oil and gas. And this was a decision of the government to uh, come to the United States in first place 
and to explain our projects and our new legislation of um, government concessions to the private sector in all those areas and the possibilities of joint ventures to uh, develop uh, these areas in Brazil. And the United States will be the first country to, New York will be the first city to host this road show, which in the future will continue to London, to Singapore, and to Tokyo, and um, even later to Beijing and Berlin. But this, and, uh, and this is very important, the um, head of the delegation, of the Brazilian delegation, will be the Minister of Finance, Mr. Guido Mantega. He will be making the, the first presentations. We will also have the um, president of uh, the National Development Bank, the NDS, uh, Luciano Coutinho. We'll have also the uh, director general of the, the oil regulatory uh, agency and also the secretary, the special secretary for ports. And we will discuss during the whole, the whole day in New York with possible future investors, the good opportunities that are taking place in Brazil. But uh, with respect to investments, I think that uh, it's very, the in investment and trade, it's always also important to bear in mind that Brazil and the United States are both countries that have an important um, domestic market which makes the, 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 the real engine of the economy. And the foreign trade, of course, is, import uh, is important for all countries. But in the case of Brazil and the United States, exports account for roughly 10 to 12 percent of total GDP, which is very good, very positive. And it, uh, uh, it, it's um, an element that protects the economy from outside uh, crisis and shocks, and it cannot be compared to many, for instance, European nations, which depend much more on foreign trade, especially uh, exports. But I would like also to mention the importance of Florida to Brazil. And we do have important relations in all areas, not only in commercial, but also in tourism and in, in academic relations. Um, and this is the, the fact that the University of Florida hosts this uh, conference today is a good example of the interest, of the mutual interest between Florida and Brazil. But uh, Florida and Brazil, we do have very close relations and this is one of the trade, the most important trade in, uh, partners for us, the state of Florida, in the whole country. In 2011, Brazil was the second most important export destination for goods and services from Florida. More than 5.2 billion were sold in goods and services to Brazil that year. And also in 2011, Brazil was the sixth main source of imported goods for Florida with more than 2.7 billion sold. Currently, there are very important companies from the state of Florida with activities in Brazil, such as Harris Corporation on the media and communication sector, Fidelity in the financial sector, and Carnival Corporation in the tourism sector. Just to mention a few, as for Brazil, uh, our enterprises currently in Florida range uh, a, a, a big uh, a, a number of different sectors. We have in, uh, Odebrecht, uh, which is a very important constructor company, and Brasken, Votorantin Cements, um, Votorantin Cement, Cementos North America, Stefanini International Corporation in the software sector, Gerdau Amede Steel Corporation, Siderurgy, Cutrali and Embraer, which I just visited yesterday. And uh, Embraer is the largest uh, manufacturer of aircraft of uh, up to 120 seats in the world. And uh, part of, as I mentioned before, part of this production is located now uh, in Florida. 
Again, with respect to uh, possibilities of investments, uh, we were reminded this morning of the coming uh, Olympic Games in Brazil, and also before that, the FIFA uh, World Cup, the, the Soccer World Cup, which I must uh, confess to you that for Brazilians is more important than the, the Olympic Games. <laughs> <laughs> Much more important. And uh, everybody asked me the same question, is will Brazil be ready for the, the FIFA uh, World Cup next year, which is in June, June, July? I said, no doubt, we will be ready. Everything will be ready. The only doubt we still have is about the team. <laughs> because they have to win. That's, and, and this is not a, an easy task with so many good players all over the world. But uh, the, the investments in, um, in the, for the Olympic Games, they, they are huge in Rio. And this is very good because this is bringing a new wave of investments and in business, in business to Rio. But also for the World Cup, which will reach out to 12 different cities, it is a very important uh, occasion to attract in investments in infrastructure in all different areas from construction to sports arena, uh, urban mobility, airports, and everything. So there's a lot of uh, possibilities for investments for all companies. And we'd like to have uh, more um, American uh, business in Brazil. A final word I'd, a word I'd like to say is about education. And I just had this morning a wonderful experience and I was hosted by Professor Emilio Bruna, who um, set up a meeting of, um, of 16 to 18, more or less, Brazilian students here at the University of Florida. Not all of them could come, but it was a very representative group of 18, more or less, and they are in the, especially in biology, engineering, and agronomy here in the University of Florida. And they came to the United States under a very important program, which was started by President Rousseff, which is called Science Without Border. Uh, President Rousseff, shortly after she took office, she uh, commissioned this program with the Minister of Education and Science and Technology. And the Foreign Minister also took uh, important part in this, especially in implementing the first, uh, the, 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 the distribution and also the uh, coming of those uh, students to the United States and to other countries. This program uh, was established by the federal government and the objective was to bring 75,000 uh, Brazilian students abroad if possible, half of this number to the United States in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And the private, this is totally funded by the federal government. And the private sector will fund also another 25,000 students. This is uh, the first time the, the government, the federal government, takes this initiative. It's a very important one because uh, uh, education is a priority of the government, and we know that without education, we will not have progress in all areas. We will not be able to find all the innovation resources that we need for our indus industry and for other areas. So uh, I was very glad to realize that uh, a number of uh, Brazilian students are here in the University of Florida. Uh, this is a very ambitious program, but, uh, and it's, of course, it's not easy to fulfill uh, completely as designed. But the, the, the objective is to have these 75,000 uh, government uh, funded and the 25,000 paid by the private sector till 2015, which will be very difficult to, to reach. But as of now, we have over 4,500 students in the United States only under this program, which is uh, something very, very important if you consider that the first students started going abroad in January last year. 
so it's been a year, 13 months. But, uh, and it's good to have big challenges because we have to work even harder to try to, at least to try to meet these, uh, these goals and these ob objectives. The program, of course, uh, the, the other half of this total st students will go to Europe and to Latin America and to Asia. And uh, it's a very, very important uh, goal. It's a lot of responsibility involved, but I was very, very glad to realize that here in Florida, especially in Gainesville at the University of Florida, the students were very happy. They were very integrated, and they all evaluated their experience as being very useful and very important for their future, not only as professionals, but also for their uh, careers, for, for their going back to Brazil for the continuation of their education in the Brazilian uh, universities they came from. So this is what I would have to tell you. I think that the, the relation between Brazil and the United States, they are very important. They are in a very good and positive uh, stage and a very positive uh, and good point in history. We, both countries, we share very uh, common values and important values. We have a lot of common characteristics. We are large continental masses with large population more or less the same historic origins uh, from Europe. And we are also uh, both multiracial um, populations. This generates a good uh, dynamic, a good synergy between our countries. And it's much easier to understand, to make business, and to be closer to uh, people which you feel like you, you think look like you. So this is why it's so important to have um, even deeper and uh, more important uh, relation uh, between our two countries. And this is, of course, what our governments are trying to do. Um, our presidents and the present uh, presidents, President Rousseff and President <coughs> Obama, met already three times. They had a wonderful meeting when President Obama went in March last year to Brazil. And he visited two cities, Brazil and Rio. And then uh, they met again uh, on the margins of the United Nations uh, General Assembly in September the same year. And last year in April, President Rousseff came on a very important uh, visit to the United States with an important delegation of ministers of her cabinet to uh, advance in all the understandings that were started in the previous uh, visit. Uh, there is a wonderful dialogue between the two heads of state. President Rousseff called President Obama to congratulate him on his re-election, and he, they, they both agreed that they need to meet again soon, if possible, this year, and to continue to deepen um, our relation. The relation as a whole is, is structured under a number of dialogues which, of course, are conducted through the governments. But one is called, and I will just refer to it briefly, not to take much of your time. The first one is the, the Global Partnership Dialogue, which is mainly for um, political issues. Then we have the Economic Partnership Dialogue to uh, discuss uh, trade, investments, and so on. And we have a very, very important dialogue which will take place uh, shortly uh, in March this year, which is this uh, strategic dialogue on energy. And we have been doing a lot in this area. Minister Rodriguez knows this very well, from ethanol to all kinds uh, of renewable energies and traditional energies, we've been working very hard in the United States. And under these three uh, mechanisms, there are a number of different others uh, dialogues and working groups and, um, and conferences. It, it's something like 24, and of course I won't mention them all, but I just would like to give you the, the, this vision of the relation and how it is conducted at the highest level, because all these three uh, dialogues I mentioned, they 
report directly to the president when they meet, and they take the decisions to, uh, to, to put more pressure on certain groups and to demand for more results from um, the one that's considered to be uh, uh, the, the most important at that moment. So that's what I'd like to tell you about Brazil and the United States. And once again, to thank you all for coming and thanking uh, the, organizers, the organizers for having such a wonderful group of people and especially so many good old friends. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.